Hi Brent, thanks for the footage and looking forward to starting the process of helping you improve your game over a sort of monthly period as per the programme we've set out. So just a few little tweaks here at setup and then I'll go on to what I want you to focus your attention primarily uh, during the backswing. Um, just, you know, reading your emails or your messages, should I say. Um, seem very concerned about P1 to P4. Um, as that tide is up, P4 to P6, P6 to P8, etc., will start to fall into place anyhow, and it's sort of it's a more appropriate time to work on things once P4 is tidied up. Um, having said that, to help you with achieving a better P4 and certainly a better sequence from one to four, uh, I want to focus on first of all P1 setup, and then secondly how you go from P1 to P2 and the sort of subsequent effects of some of the changes that we're going to make so first and foremost onto p1 uh, i'd like to see your handle push forward slightly um, with every club feel like the butt of the club or the line through the shaft would point more towards the center of the lead hip so that would be sort of change number one what I would also want to see is I would want to see your trail hand rotated round approximately 20, 25 degrees. So a little bit of a stronger trail hand. And the reason for that is I want to soften up this trail arm. At the moment, this trail arm is very straight. And that's why this trail shoulder sort of pushes forward. Um, and it, it severely impacts on your move away from the golf ball. So what I'd want to see is... Slightly more rotated trail hand, slightly more supinated trail arm, so that this trail arm has a slight bend in it, maybe sort of 10, 15 degrees of bend, certainly no more than that. And as you do that and supinate that trail arm, this trail shoulder is going to drop back a little bit. So rather than sort of fiddling with your alignment, if you will, um, supinating that trail arm has an impact on the way the shoulders align. And you're going to see that in your setup pretty quickly. So strengthening the trail hand, softening the trail arm, allowing the right shoulder to just pull back slightly or be pulled back slightly, which would then make the first move in the golf swing a little bit easier for you to um, carry out in an appropriate manner. So I'm just going to get rid of some of these arrows. Focus more now on your hand path from P1 to P2. Uh, the reason I selected your driver, by the way, is that, um, that having looked at your swing with both your iron and your driver, the areas of areas of concern are, are there in both um, areas of both clubs, iron and driver, but far more emphasised with driver. So if we can do it with driver, we can certainly do it with iron. Okay, so we can see the first move and appreciate this camera handle's just slightly off, but the hands work up and out and the club rolls under. Uh, throughout your swing, there's a little bit too much accumulated three, so a little bit too much rolling aspect, certainly from one to four, uh, but that's going to change pretty quickly once we add the changes that we're going to discuss shortly. So hand path from one to two is out and up too much and what that's causing is that's causing a little bit too level shoulder turn but more importantly the alignment of the forearms is inappropriate so at this point we would want to see the trail arm sitting more above the lead arm we'd want to see a different structure in regards to the forearms in regards to the shoulders lead shoulder down a little bit more Trail forearm a little bit higher, lead forearm a little bit lower, hands in more, etc. etc. Now, when we look at it from face on, overall the appearance of the lead shoulder is a little bit too level. And again, when you look at it with an iron, it's not as as not emphasized as this, but the lead shoulder trajectory is certainly not ideal. And the reason for that is because of what the hands are doing. And the other thing we've got to appreciate is the way the knees work substantially impacts your ability to work the hands correctly and also 
working the shoulders on the correct tilts. And when I look at your swing from face on, it looks very armsy, the lower body looks quite static, particularly early in the swing. And that's where I want to focus our attention a little bit more. I want to get the knees working a little bit better. And I want to get the hand path much better from one to two. And those things go hand in hand. So I'm going to get someone up now face on to show you the differences and show you the changes and feels that I'd like you to focus on during the practice sessions between now and week two or three when we do the QA on FaceTime. Um, if between now and then you've got any questions, we can do a back and forth on Messenger or WhatsApp, whichever's easiest for you. Uh, either one of those works for me. So if I don't get back to you straight away, I'll either be teaching or doing something with the family. And as soon as I get a chance, I'll respond to your questions uh, as best I can. So I'm going to get someone up face on for you now, model swing to add some detail and give you some visuals and feels to work on in the coming weeks. Okay, so here we've got Troy up at the side of your P1 face on. Uh, straight away, you can see the differences in regards to the location of the handle. So his shaft is pushed forward much more. Again, line up going to roughly the center of the lead hip, whereas yours is back more. Um, his right arm is relatively straight, so I'm not really looking at that piece. Uh, in this comparison, I'm working more on what the knees are doing, but I do want to see a slightly stronger trail hand with you and a slightly softer trail arm. The big difference here is the way the body works from P1 to P2, maybe 2.5. So when we watch Troy swing from 1 to 2.5, we see that the knees change flex quite a lot throughout the swing certainly early in the swing and I'm going to actually take this to P3 and you can see there now that that trail leg has straightened out a tremendous amount and this lead knee as it moves inwards courtesy of the rotation of the pelvis it's also flexing forward and that allows you to maintain your stability. So as the lead knee gets pulled in, courtesy of the turning of the pelvis, it must flex forward to keep you stable and keep you centered. So you can see that the lower body knees are changing flex, allowing the lead shoulder to work down. And that's creating a tremendous ability for the hands to work inwards more. When we look at your swing from face on, P1 to P3, the knees don't change flex early enough. The lead shoulder doesn't work down enough. The pelvis doesn't rotate enough. There's not enough tilt in the hips. There's not enough tilt in the shoulders. And that's why the hands can't work in. So your trail leg needs to straighten more. Your lead knee needs to flex forward towards the golf ball more. And it may even be that as you do this, the sensation you're going to get is that the head from P1 to P3, and this would be a rehearsal feel, your head is going to move forward and down. That's going to, that's going to, you're going to have to change flex in the knees much more dramatically to achieve that sort of, that sensation. Okay. Um, I did an online lesson for a guy called Cody Collins during the lockdown period in the UK. Um, and his, I think it's his second lesson. It's like a little bit of a follow up that we did. Um, he made some great changes in regard to that move from P1 to P4, P1 to P3, um, feeling like he was going sort of down and forward, uh, feeling like he was getting the chest to the sky and the ear to the ground, P1 to P3, rather than, in your case, the sort of ear's pretty level, the chest is still sort of slightly downwards, certainly not up to the sky, 
as much as we see with Troy. So it's working that into uh, your actual swing, trying to feed it in. But the knees have got to change flex more to allow the pelvis to rotate more, to allow the hands to work in more, and to allow the lead shoulder to work down more. So that, that linkage between your knees and the rest of your body is huge. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get you up from down the line and I'm going to get somebody else up from down the line and just give you an indication as to how the sort of the change in flex in the knees affects the hand path and affects the alignment of the elbows. Okay, so here we have Grant alongside you, uh, P1 down the line. You can see here that that right shoulder just looks like it's protruding forward a little bit too much and that that right arm is very, very straight. What we see with Grant is a little bit of bend in the right arm, not too much, anywhere between five and maybe 15 degrees. I like sort of somewhere in between two is a nice little sort of baseline to start from. As a result, the alignments look a little bit better at setup. But the main thing is I want you to look at what happens as he goes from P1 to P2. So I'm just going to clear those lines out of the way. I just run him through a few times. Hands work in, knees change flex, shoulder works down. By the time he gets to P2, the trail arm, or trail elbow, is slightly higher than the lead elbow. The tilt in the shoulders is more substantial than what we see with yourself, so I'm going to work you back now to P2. Knees don't really change flex enough. Hands come out a little bit more. Lead elbow sits a little bit higher than the trail elbow. Tilts in the shoulders are a little bit too level. And the torso has not been activated quite as much. So as his knees change flex, his right hip can turn deeper sooner. That creates room for the hands to work in. In your case, your right hip doesn't work deep enough soon enough which is why the hands can't come in now the impact the, the elbows have is that in order for the left arm to now keep moving to p4 the right arm can start to bend allowing the left arm to keep moving and that provides some upward to the backswing so as the right arm flexes to keep the left arm moving provide some upward to the swing which is why we see the hands elevate from hand plane to elbow plane from p1 to p4 and at p3 we see the shaft to start to hit the base of the trail bicep now because of the positioning of your elbows if your right elbow um, started to bend now it would just start pulling the left arm in more it wouldn't really provide enough upward the alternative move would be to lift the arms off the rib cage, which, looking at you swing um, and appreciating your background uh, online, you know you, you're well aware that the arms do need to stay on the rib cage. So now what we see is this right arm bending, but pulling the lead arm in too much. So we see the shaft sitting very flat at P3, and then three to four, everything goes further and further and further behind you. rather than gradually inwards and upwards. So we can imagine the change in tilts. If we, I'm just going to do a little bit of a stick man for you now. If you were to straighten this leg more, flex this leg more sooner, that would add some tilt to the pelvis like we see with Grant. It would allow you to keep the lead shoulder down a little bit more which in turn would provide you with a lead arm that was up a little bit more and a trail arm that was pulled in less behind you. Very similar to what we see with Grant on the right hand side of your screen. But that position you've seen at P4 is pretty much set up courtesy of the setup we discussed earlier and the move from one to two. 
So generally speaking, set up obviously stronger right arm, just to summarize, stronger right hand, softer right arm, that'll help with the right shoulder positioning. Then from P1 to P2 and P2 to P3, you cannot change flex in the knees enough. You wanna be thinking in terms of hands in, maximum amount of hip turn from P1 to P2, P3. You could even focus on P2.5 as your reference. As long as it's consistent, it doesn't really matter. Play around with the feels, send me some video footage as you're playing around with the feels so that we know you're moving in the right direction. And let's get cracking on improving that P4, courtesy of the little changes that we've just discussed at P1 and the move from P1 to P2, P3. Good luck with it and look forward to watching this one progress over the coming months.